was always announced as Professor Edward Moybridge, and woe betide anyone who spelt his Christian name incorrectly. For the rapid investigation of animal locomotion, they did not make a work of art as such, but they rivaled nature as closely as possible. Although we sat side by side on our long railway journeys, also at meals in hotels, Moybridge never told me anything of his private affairs. A convulsive gasp escaped the prisoner's lips, and he sank forward from his chair. The mental and nervous tension that had sustained him for days of uncertain fate was removed in an instant, and he became as helpless as a newborn babe. Pendergast begged Moybridge to control himself and thank the jurymen for their verdict. He arose to his feet and tried to speak out, but sank back in another convulsion. He came to my home to supper on more than one occasion. I seem to recall that the secretary of one of the learned societies told me that Moybridge had killed a man. He was white as marble, and his lips compressed. Asked him what was the matter. He said he had no thought of suicide. It was his honor he wanted to vindicate, and in doing so he might lose his life. I had a great respect for Moybridge's versatility and his forceful personality. He was a very voluble speaker, and he told me that he never suffered from nervousness. I operated the zoopraxiscope for him over 60 times. We never had a breakdown. His emotion became convulsive and frightful. His eyes were glassy, his jaws set, and his face livid. The veins of his hands and forehead swelled out like whipcord. He moaned and wept convulsively, but uttered no word of pain or rejoicing. Moybridge was extremely vain and intolerant of contradiction. He was a handsome man with dark, flashing eyes. He was very impatient if everything was not exactly to his previous instructions by post, and he was very dictatorial to all porters and caretakers. The zoo praxiscope did not flicker painfully like the early cinematograph did. Moybridge's pictures moved smoothly, and certainly no one who had witnessed his show would describe it as painful. I never saw or heard of him directly or indirectly since. He surely was a strange character, but was all very likable. We went into a vacant room. Tears and perspiration streamed down his face. He could not speak. Asked him what the trouble was, said he, My poor wife, what will become of her? Make me a promise to settle my business with my wife, the same as with me. He looked at his watch, said time was up, and tore away from me. Believe he had gone mad, was afraid of him. 